Hi there. Welcome. Uh, my name is Meg, and I make Mashables, and I'm so happy that you're here. I, this is my first ever uh, YouTube uh, adventure, and I'm very excited to see where this goes, and I really hope I don't burn myself out. Just a couple of things. Uh, when If you are completely new to myself or Mashables or Meg's Mashables or anything like that, I want to be able to explain a couple of things. So first and foremost, what is a Mashable? A Mashable is simple yet complex. It is something where I take two elements, normally an animal, with either another animal or food or an inanimate object, something like that, and I create a completely new creature. The biggest rule that I hold myself to is that it has to be a functioning creature. So I, I don't want, like, if it's like an apple and a raccoon, I don't want a raccoon holding an apple. I want an apple with a, with a, a, t a raccoon tail and whiskers, you know, that kind of thing. So I want it to be a, a mesh, a mash, if, if you will. <laughs> to make an entirely new creature. So for an example, I have, if some of you can recognize this, this is the cork. He is a corgi and a shark. Mixed together is the cork. This is the first ever plush that I came out with. Uh, very exciting. Over a thousand people ordered it and they are all across the globe. People in Australia are starting to get their Mashable or their cork, which is insane to me. But anyway, so that's a good example of what a Mashable is. So I make Mashables on TikTok. I make Mashables on Twitch. I post it on Instagram, on Twitter, that kind of stuff. And I felt like I needed to add YouTube into the mix for the following reason. I felt like TikTok was a very short snippet of what I was making. And you were getting a, a good taste of just kind of like the really brief chaotic moments while I was making the TikTok or while I was making the Mashable, which is awesome and very consumable, very quick. You get it for a minute. But you don't really get to see the behind the scenes or like why I chose that, that kind of thing. On Twitch, on the other hand, I I, I, I go for a little long and, and, and it's, it's like a four hour stream and I get distracted by chatting with wonderful people and there's raids that come in and I get hungry and those kinds of things. And so it takes a lot longer to consume and watch how I make a Mashable. So this is why I started making a YouTube is because I wanted to have a middle ground where you could watch me make a Mashable in real time, but also it, you're, you're hearing as to why I've made certain decisions that I'm making, why I chose what animal body part or why I chose the coloration or, you know, when we can start going into Procreate and that's the stuff that I, that's the app that I use to draw these on the iPad. Eventually I will have a camera that is pointing down at my iPad as well as the camera that's looking at me. As of right now, what we're going to be doing is I'm just recording it via QuickTime on my computer and I'm going to sync up the video so you can see what I'm doing kind of just like Twitch. But until then, just bear with me. And again, this is kind of, this is experimental and I don't really know where this is going to go. So excited. And I hope that you guys have fun watching how a Mashable is made. Um, also, I really wanted to get into kind of the nerdier side because Meg's Mashables originally was inspired by just kind of the what if and make it, we're, we're, we're playing, you know, we're, we're creating a new animal. So what would that animal sound like? Where would they live? You know, how big would they be? How soft or prickly or whatever? What would they eat? That kind of stuff. I want to be able to explore that with you too. And so I would love to hear after we make a Mashable, what you think that the animal would look like. Just different specs, because I think that another thing that's so amazing about Mashables is that Everybody can have a different perspective. Everybody could have a different idea as to what that Mashable was supposed to look like, that kind of thing. Without further ado, let's make a Mashable. When I first started making Mashables, I didn't have the wonderful Mashy community behind me giving me wonderful ideas um, in the comments for Mashable combinations. Like the cork. The cork was a comment on TikTok. But when I first started, I didn't have Mashies. By the way, a Mashy is you. Someone that follows my content, someone that is a fan, hopefully, of my Mashables. A Mashable is the creature that I make. Mashies are the fans, the fandom, that kind of stuff. So just a, just a fun little 
fun little vocab guide. So when I first started, I needed to find ways to be able to inspire myself because after a while it gets very exhausting trying to figure out what animal you're going to make. So I found this website called, ra it's randomlists.com, not sponsored, please don't hate me. They just make this these random lists that you can generate. You can tell it how many animals, you can tell it what kind of animals, if you just want birds, if you want fish, snakes, I choose just animals, and then a quantity of two, and then it shows the images, and then you just press the little return button and you come up with a bumblebee seal <laughs> well we've just decided what mashable we're going to make because why not even though i've made i think nine mashables that are bumblebees we've got the bumble corby which is a corgi bumblebee we've got the bumble corn the platy bee bumbadillo the trash panda bee there's the bumble coo which is a, a, a bumblebee cow or coo the highland coo um I've done so many bumblebees. Uh, but you know what? Bumblebees are adorable. We want to go with the the first one because if you start trying to overthink the mashable or the combination that you're given, you start going down this rabbit hole of overthinking and that's not the point of mashables. The point is to just take what you're given and make it into something and trust the process. That's the biggest thing that we try to do when we come to mashables. So let's make a mashable. Again, eventually I would love to be able to have another camera that is showing how, like what I'm doing with the pen and that kind of stuff. So you can see how I am interacting with the iPad. But as of right now, I only own one camera. So uh, yeah. <laughs> So what we're going to be doing is what we're going to work with is we're going to be working with what we've got. And then maybe eventually it'll be really cool and we can watch this channel grow and we can see, look at that, Meg got a second camera so you can see what she's doing with her hands. It's awesome. But until then, we're going to have to just work with the QuickTime video that I have no idea where I'm going to be putting it in this screen. Maybe half and half. <sighs> Who knows? We're gonna figure it out together. But anywho, this is the first time that I've ever actually like step by step worked with someone and talked to people about what I'm doing for the Mashable. So it's very exciting and it's very new. And also it's kind of like intimidating because I'm able to show people snippets of it. And now you're seeing everything for what it's worth. This is the sauce. This is the secret sauce. Um, anyway, I kind of don't really like that picture of a seal. So I'm gonna look up another seal picture seal animal because I don't need like a stamp. Come on now. A big thing that I want to tell you guys. One, I'm not professionally trained. So any of the things that I'm telling you are things that I personally have figured out and experienced in my own life. I have not taken an art class since the seventh grade. But regardless, everything that I say Take with a grain of salt because I am not a, a, a trained professional <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. I am just sharing the experiences with you that I have learned so far. So I want to, and you guys can say in the comments whether or not you, what more you want me to explain what I'm doing. But once you start drawing more and more of the same animal, it's just kind of like muscle memory. You start remembering like, oh, bumblebees have little black heads and then like a fuzzy yellow crown. Or you start remembering like seals, their body shape is like this. But always use references, guys and gals and non-binaries, because it's okay. If someone ever says that using references or even tracing is cheating, it's it just to me that seems really silly because you have to learn somehow. Obviously, with the tracing aspect, like if you start tracing other people's photos or God forbid, art, um, and then you play it off as your own, that's when we start getting a little in the wishy-washy, like, don't do that, that's not cool. But when you are tracing just to, like, learn the mechanics of, like, tracing a hand or tracing a, a face or eyes or something like that, that's super helpful. And so don't get, don't be hard on yourself for that kind of thing. My first thing is I like to draw both animals individually, so I kind of get a feel of each animal and their different elements. This picture also isn't super great for the bumblebee. So let's look up bumblebee. <laughs> oh, they're so chunky. Let's do this one because it kind of gives us a good, like their little bean bodies. So the pen that I'm using, people ask the like, oh, what pens do you use? What brushes do you use? I literally use two. 
I am very bad at diversifying my brushes. I found two brushes that I liked in the very beginning of doing art with my with my iPad and I just stuck with it. I would like to be able to try to train myself out of that and try to learn how to do something a little bit better or differently um, just so I don't feel stuck on one pen. But as of right now, I found my two pens and they are <laughs> they're from the like the the brush library that comes with the the app. So, it's not something that you need to download. It's literally I have dry ink and I have studio pen. So, I start with dry ink pen and I just work with the opacity. I'm normally at about I'm normally at about 50% and about this size. So, about 20% size if not a little bit bigger, with the opacity, I just play with it. With this dry brush, it gives me such an awesome ability to be able to kind of like, I can I can make it feel very sketchy. I can make it bigger. I can color in with it. If I make it really, really big and really, really faint, I can color in so I can, and it overlaps itself. So you can kind of just like keep going. I just, I really like that ability to, it, it makes it feel very sketchy and free and I can just be really, chunky and clonky with it. Clonky? Anyway, so that's 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 the pen that I use and that's why. I keep it at kind of like a brownish color. Again, I think I just saw this on some YouTube video for a tutorial or a TikTok and I was like, hey, I really like that. And I just went with it. And so hopefully it, it, it works for you too. If it doesn't, I'm not offended. So when I am looking at this bumblebee, if you were to strip away all of the different elements and details of this animal, what would be the final thing that you would be able to recognize the bumblebee? So if you have the bumblebee and you take the wings off, you can still tell it's a bumblebee. If you take the antenna off, obviously this is Photoshop taking off and mentally, please don't actually go out and pluck wings off of bumblebees because then there's going to be some red flags and we need to maybe get you into therapy. Anyway, if you were to take a bumblebee, no wings. You can still recognize that it's a bumblebee. No antenna. You can still recognize that it's a bumblebee. Six legs. You can still recognize that it's a bumblebee. It's when you start taking the fluffiness, in my opinion, when you start taking the fluffiness out, then you're like, okay, this is just a, a yellow and black striped jelly bean. I can still kind of tell that it's a bumblebee, but as soon as you get the yellow and black stripes out of there, you have no idea what you're looking at and you don't know what that animal is. So if you just, if you strip it down to its bare basics, what are the like one or two most important visual aspects that show that that is in fact a bumblebee or whatever that animal is? So to me, it's... The, the fuzziness, I think the bean shape is also a, a close contender, but it's the fuzziness and it's those yellow and black stripes. So that's the big thing for me. So when I'm drawing, I have this tiny little head. And when you're also a thing that I gave my that I never gave myself credit for for when I was first starting off was it's OK for your sketch to look like a chicken did it. It's OK. Like it is not for anybody other than yourself. So it's like a first draft where it's no one is going to be seeing this unless you do a YouTube video. And so no one's going to be no one's going to be seeing it. So it doesn't need to fully make sense. It's you trying to hash out what you want it to look like, what you want this pose to look like. And so I drew the little head. And what I see is that the head is smaller than this little like jelly bean body, right? So if you really want to go into just shapes, you want to just really start off with a really rough, like we're starting with shapes. And so I see a little circle attached to a, and also I'm looking at this and like the butt, honestly, it kind of like goes down this way. I see this little jelly bean body and I'm just going to say jelly bean more times to the point where I'm going to either have to buy jelly beans or I'm going to have to never say it ever again in my life. So I've got this bean body <laughs> and then we've got the six legs and just kind of like seeing how those, those, those legs just kind of like, like the first four kind of hang, you can just see they kind of just hang down, but then the back legs kind of curl out a little bit. But then you actually can see that like bees have little feet. They have these like little, like two nubs. So you, you just like, you just see, you see, st you start seeing like little details that you would want to put in. And then again, you know, I can make my size a lot bigger and my opacity smaller. So I can just kind of start adding 
those stripes to see so like that. So okay, so right now we kind of have a B shape. We don't have we don't have wings on it yet. And, and a good thing too you want to think of when you're starting to draw this is are these wings going to be in focus? Are they going to be like is the camera did the camera have the the fastest shutter speed ever so the the wings are just still? Or are you going to have a little bit of a blur to them? And again, that's that's an artistic choice that you can make. So this is the B. This is the B fluff that I have. This is what I've got. And again, <laughs> showing people the beginning stages of of a B or of my of of my drawing, it's kind of it's kind of vulnerable because they're not meant for people to be watching the entire time. So again, this is that whole you, you go through this internal battle as an artist, and we all know it as trust the process, where you want this instant gratification of that you want your art to look amazing right off the bat because you have an idea in your head, or you might not but you want it to look good right away. And that's just not how life works. And that's not how art works. And so just allow yourself to know that you're probably not going to like what it looks like for a second. And that's okay. And that was a thing that was so hard for me when I first started doing art. Not even first started. For like the first decade of me doing art, because I was younger, that kind of thing, I just was such a bully to myself because I was, and I, I wouldn't finish a lot of pieces because I never allowed myself to push past that moment of, I hate this, <laughs> why do I do art? Because on the other side of that, you're gonna discover something amazing, I promise. So just keep pushing past, and you'll probably, in these videos, you will most likely see me suffer through that, where I'm just like, what the heck am I doing? Why did I choose this profession? And then you get through it and you're like, oh my God, here it is. And there's those moments of like, yes. And you just like fall in love with your, 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 your mashable, your creation. And you start feeling it. And that's when you're like, this is why I do this. So hopefully we have those moments together. But anyway, back to seal. So now, so I, again, I've got the shape for the B and I'm going to go over to the seal without trying too hard with focusing on or pre-planning what I want the creation to be. I'm still, I'm thinking of elements. I have yellow and black stripes. I have fluffy. Six legs potentially, but we'll go with that. We'll see. So now we're dealing with water. So we have an air, we had an, a, a, a flying creature that has all these different evolutionary traits specified for being in the air. And now we're going completely opposite where we're dealing with an animal that is a professional at being underwater. So we have very streamlined. We have very tapered off, very shiny, not fluffy. Seal pups are fluffy, but we're not going to go with a seal pup. I'm sure it would be adorable, but I want to go with like this seal seal and very dog like. I feel like if I just like added <laughs> little ears, it's just like, and we have a dog. <laughs> also, I see I'm looking at shapes. So right now, I like the head is smooth, but it kind of has that like little bit of a right angle over here. I don't know if you can see this, but like right there, it kind of it kind of dips down like that. And then it, it's like a very smooth curve from there going forward. I'm going to bring this over here. So we see this kind of, it's almost, oh God, I'm erasing everything. Okay. Also for eraser, just to let you know, I use a, an airbrush soft blend. Um, it gives me the ability to be able to, I can erase everything at once if I want to, or if I want to just kind of like tone down something, I can do that as well and make a, an edge softer. But anyway, I, I'm looking at this seal and I'm trying just now, I'm not trying to get anything other than shapes. So it looks to me like the head is more square and the nose is more square. And then it kind of gives me this shape, like this oval shape in the top. And then it gives me another oval shape right here. So again, just dealing with shapes, nothing crazy. It's not supposed to look super great. <laughs> so, or at least that's what she's telling herself. Um, so we've got two ovals and, and like a, a square and a rectangle going on. And then we start going to the flippers that kind of come out like that. And then we're looking at the shapes for the flippers as well. I see a square and a triangle. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go square and triangle. And the triangle kind of 
connects like that and then the triangle comes out of that a little bit there. And then this, the side one is really just like, we don't have to, okay. So then we're going to the tail and it comes out like that and it droops down. And then we're looking at the shape again. And again, right there, I see it's a, it's a, a rectangle. <laughs> Meg's remembering shapes on the fly. She remembers shapes. And then the other one is kind of like hidden. There's like a little nubbin in between. Um, so yeah, so then we can start. So now we have our shapes. We've got our oval, oval, square, square. And so then we can start because it's a very streamlined creature. We can start giving ourselves a little bit more of the outline of the animal. So that is that nice smooth S curve right there. And you want to connect your things like that. The, you see just a little bit of the far right side of its face. And then you've got its nose right there. And then you have, it, it's the rest of its mouth kind of droops down a little bit like that. His nose peeks up over the rest and it looks like he kind of has a little bit of a poofy nose. And then we've got that and then we've got his little eye. And he's got a bunch of whiskers bunch of whiskers. So then we can come in with our eraser and we can just kind of erase the sh the innards that we don't need anymore. So we can kind of see a little bit better of like what we want that to look like. Again, I'm not here claiming that I am some like professional artiste or anything like that, but I have what would can be considered, you know, a, a, a popular art style and people like it. And I want to be able to, I don't want to gatekeep. I want to be able to show people what I do. Like I'm trying to talk and, and draw at the same time, but I want to be able to show people what I do, what my process is and, and hope that I can inspire people to, to make their own content or make their own art. That being said, we've got a seal shape. Now I have my two reference materials or my two, my two drawings. And I kind of just, oh God, I have it in free form. There we go. And then I kind of just look at them for a little bit. And I just look at, do I like that it's facing this way? Do I like just different elements? Like what do, what do I like about this? What do I don't? And start thinking about the different elements that I want to bring over. So with the bee, I have the six legs, the wings, and the stripes, you know? So those are, those are, and maybe the antenna. So those are the elements that I'm like, this is what I want to bring over into this Mashable. For the seal, I think that the, the face shape and the flippers are very important. I feel like for a seal, like how we were talking about with the bumblebee, what would the seal elements be if you stripped it all away? How would you still recognize that it was a seal? I think that the whiskers and the nose and the head shape, like that head and neck shape, I think are very, are very uh, seal-esque. <laughs> so you're like, that's a seal, as opposed to that's a shark or that's another aquatic animal that is similar to a seal because like other things have flippers. So flippers wouldn't necessarily have that. So my next question is, do I want it to be flying or do I want it to be sitting down? Part of me immediately wants to go to having it flying. But, there's a big butt, a big fuzzy bumblebee butt. I have made a bunch of Mashables. And when I'm looking around, I'm looking around at my office and I can actually see a lot of them just either in sticker form or on prints. And I see that they are all, all of them are flying. So I think it might be in my best interest to try to diversify my bee Mashables just slightly. And maybe have them have it a land-esque creature. It can still have its wings, maybe. So I'm going to choose to have it posing as on, a, like on the ground, like a seal. I went through drawing the seal and I didn't like the pose of it. And so that's okay. And just go with it. And th this is all brainstorming and planning. So I still really like 
the pose that I just chose. And so let's go with, let's go with this. But we still, it's still the same shapes, right? It's still the same shapes with what we drew earlier. So we have a circle. We've got our oval. It's just kind of in a different place now. And we've got another oval and it's just in a kind of a different place now. And then we've got our, our little, our little flippers here. We've got a lot of little wrinkly bits. And then we've got our square and our triangle. It's in the same, it's just in different spots. So we've got, we've got this shape, right? Big fan, big fan of the shape. Very seal-like. I think it's almost to the point where it's so seal-like that we're going to have to really push those elements of bumblebee in here because we're starting to push a little too much right now to seal base. But this is the seal base that I've got so far. And adding the little ears because, oh my god. Um, <laughs> and what we can do is really make this terrifying. <laughs> because since we already have a lot of seal version or seal parts of this, <laughs> we can we could make this look like a terrifying bee creature face. Anyway, let's see how it goes. So um I also like to um just for uh giggles. Um, see just how far off I was with the drawing versus the actual image. And honestly, I'm not too offended by it. And it, you can consider this tracing, but I think it's, this is at this point, this was me eyeballing it. And now I'm just kind of getting that like, here we go. So now we can do that and we kind of get a little bit more of that. Perfect. Okay. Now we've got our, our seal base. And this is going to be either adorable or terrifying. Uh, again, Mashables tends to be both. <laughs> tends to be both. So, um, so we've got that and let's try to get, okay. So now we're trying to bring in the Bumblebee concept art for this. So, Sometimes what I'll do as well is I will draw a couple versions and then just like look at the thumbnails next to one another and go, which one do I like the best? But I think for the simplicity sake for this one, we're going to just go with what I have so far. So now we've got the seal base uh, because that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to have a little bit more. So what is these elements that make it a bumblebee? One, I think it should have six legs. Since we're only seeing the right side of this animal we're only going to see the this this uh this flipper over here i want the flipper to resemble the front flippers versus the back flippers because the back flippers are more for stability and and um like the rudder of the animal i think that if this animal were to have six legs and just adding this third middle flip fin I think it would match this one to help it um <laughs> to help it move and oh my god can we just uh, appreciate the fact that the slaps that this would sound like would just be phenomenal it would just be like nope that's just like flap, 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 flap. <laughs> just could you imagine so is it it's a bumblebee and a seal is this a bumblebee is this a seal bee a sea a sea a bumble sea a sumble, sumble sea? I don't know. <laughs> well, it will come to us. Okay, so let's start adding fluffiness to this creature. I think a big thing too for bumblebees is that they have a, this like really fuzzy crown that makes their head kind of look just shrimpish. So I'm going to bring his head down and smaller. <laughs> See, these are the moments when we start cracking ourselves up because now we've got, we've got this tiny head and I'm going to add this like bumblebee fuzzy mane above its head. Uh <laughs> and we're going to just go with it and see how, it, <laughs> how we enjoy it. Some people might think that it's a lion because I'm kind of forcing this fuzz to it. So we will start adding more fuzz to this more fuzz more fuzz um i don't i think the legs need to be 
less fuzzy. So it'll just be this like fuzzy little body with these little, you know, okay. All right. We've got this. We're going here. Okay. So we've got, <laughs> it looks so, oh boy. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is when you start hearing me like giggle uh through my my pieces of art and it's it's just it's a mixture of me being like what the heck what the heck am i making um and also a i'm having so much fun and i just hope that you have fun when you're making a mashable or when you are when you're creating your own art because if you're not having fun, then what's the point, right? So we've got this. And before we start going too much into the next stages, I like to do a flip where you can flip, you can, if you select your layer, you can also flip the canvas. I just like to select the layer because I'm just working on sketch line work right now. So I flip the layer because our brains are how our heads are tilted, everything like that. We get very adjusted to our perspective as we're working through it. So we don't really know how symmetrical our art is. And so there's this fun thing where if you flip your piece, Every once in a while, you should just be flipping it and it will give you and I'm like, you know, I'm realizing that here it's not as well rounded out on this side. So I'm doing that. I'm realizing that like if there were to be a plane where it's it's feet would be or it's flippers would be I think that this needs to be a little bit farther down. So what I do is I use this selection tool and I just very like grotesquely <laughs> just like rip it apart and just add things and move things and tilt things to my to my desire. You're just moving things around a little bit. Again, this is not when you're trying to make things look really pretty. It's more of you're trying to get this pose down. So we want this kind of to be okay. So we've got that. And I think as of right now, we're doing good. So I'm going to bring it back and flip it. Sometimes when you flip it, you go, oh, I actually like it looking better that way. And that's fine. And again, you're improvising through this, you're discovering this piece of art through it. And so it's, it's exciting. Now, <laughs> now is when there's the potential for um, terrifying creature. So I kind of want to add antenna. And if you look at the if you look at it's the antenna that I make. It kind of balls up at the top and it's like a little like a, 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 a flower. Ste what are those pets? Why do I want to say pestule? But I feel like that's not right. Maybe I'll figure it out later and it'll pop up on screen. Maybe I don't know how to edit properly and I won't know how to do this and this will just be really awkward. But anyway, antenna are really fun to draw and I kind of like they kind of look like little golf clubs sometimes. So that's what I've got there. I, I, I want big eyes. So when you're drawing on the head, keep in mind uh, the geometry of the head. I have this guy kind of looking, I'd like for this guy to actually be looking a little bit over his shoulder. And so having it like that. So now that I'm looking at that, this antenna needs to be moved a little bit. So it's on the side of the head. So You've got, <laughs> I'm cracking myself up because this is going to be absolutely terrifying. So if you want to, if you're, if you want to be able to like see and give yourself an idea. So I, I, I make that cross this, like this, if you're going with geometry and you have this orb, imagine this 3D circle or this 3D sphere and where it's looking is where that cross point is. And so you kind of want that middle line to curve. So like here, it's looking up. Here, it's looking this way. And the farther eyeball should be smaller than the clo than the, the closer one. Um, again, these might be obvious to you. They might not be. So I am trying to just tell you what I'm doing throughout and why I'm making these decisions. So I'm going to bring up the seal again so I can get a uh, I can remember that side view of that face, that adorable little mouth, just to remind myself. So I kind of am already starting to see that I want this tiny little nose. So the nose will be here and you want it a little bit past the other side, the, the right side of the head, just to kind of give that depth. 
and then I want it to have just gigantic bug eyes. <laughs> because it's a bee! Anyway. <laughs> Um, and also I am trying to like this, this face needs, the, the nose needs to be that like little square that we drew earlier where you kind of see only a little bit of the right side of its face and its little mouth droops down. Again, this is when you trust the process and you go, I don't know what this looks like, but it's okay. We're working on it. Don't worry. Don't give yourself a heart attack. It's fine. Um, so we've got, now we've got this just strange <laughs> creature <laughs> with giant eyes and <laughs> And this is when I start cracking myself up because I'm like, what on mashable green earth are we making? And the answer is we have no idea. So we've got that. And I really like the idea of having the little, the whiskers. So, okay. So we've got, we've got the base of our, of our creature. We've, we've got, <laughs> I want him to be fluffy I want him, I also want him to have wings because science, this won't make sense, but I don't care. We'd like to think, how about it, it, it in, instead of not caring, how about we make it where these wings used to be helpful and they used to work just like with penguins, but they're now like for communicating with one another. So I would like to imagine that the bumblebeel is actually, it has little wings, but they use it more for like communicating and fluttering and buzzing. And so if you go on a beach with a bunch of bumblebeels, it's deafening. And they also sound like seals too. So it's just a bunch of honking and buzzing. Uh, Bazonking? Hmm. I don't know if that's a good word. <laughs> Oh my god. So you just go and they're like, welcome to the Bumblebee Beach where there's just a bunch of bazonking. And they're like, excuse me. And it's like, no, it's just buzzing. Anyway, you know what? We're gonna just, we're gonna drop that. We're gonna drop that and we're gonna keep going. <laughs> anyway, so now I'm just kind of like really loosely figuring out where I want those Bumblebee stripes to be to be. <laughs> and then also their little feetsies or their flippers are darker. So we'll just do that. And we're starting to see our bumblebee. I think the bumblebee is going to stick. So, okay. So we've got it. So let's, let's go in. And this is when you're like, okay, I've got my idea. I'm, I'm, I'm really jamming with it. I really like it. We don't need, we can get rid of these guys. So now what? Now what? Honestly, it kind of looks like a seal <laughs> is in a bumblebee costume, which is adorable, but not something that I necessarily want it to do. So I'm going to just add something that makes it just terrifying. But I also, again, I want to make it where it's like, this is not a seal in a bumblebee costume. As adorable as that is, this is a new creature. And so what am I going to do is I'm going to give it little the little mandibles that bees have as well. And so it's going to have these little, even though it kind of looks like tusks and it still kind of looks like it. So now, now we're like, okay, we're, we're, I mean, obviously it's not a seal in a bee costume if it has six legs, but still I'm trying, like, I'm just, th these, these are my thought processes. This is what I'm doing. I can argue with myself as much as I'd like, um, but this is what I'm doing. So now I'm just kind of adding texture in the center, just really giving myself a good idea. Also a good remember, reminder that the flippers are very L shaped. Like they're, they're, it's like almost like they hinge right at that little wrist and they flatten almost completely on the ground. So, all right. So we've got, we've got our, our, our a, a bumble, a bumblebee or a bumble, a bumble. What the heck? Seal and bumblebee. Bumblebeal. Golly. It's like I said it like five minutes ago and I already forgot. So this is what we've got so far. I don't know how long we've been filming for, but this is like, I don't, it's uh, 15 minutes. Oh my gosh. So it, it, it takes a while to make these. So give yourself time. Give yourself credit. These don't take, art 
takes its time. Again, I kind of want to bring this a little bit more fluffy. So I'm just now I'm just really just kind of playing with it and and seeing what all I want in this bumblebeel. So cool. Awesome. So now this is when the more fun stuff happens. So I now take my sketch layer and I take the opacity. You click the N, which N stands for normal, which I don't know about you, but I don't relate to. And you scroll the opacity down and I kind of bring it down to like a 30% ish area. So it's still there, but it's not as prominent. And then you go into a different layer. Always go into a different layer. Oh my God, N don't, don't, don't do your line work on top of the same layer or you'll be very sad. Anyway, so you go and make a new layer. And this is when I go into my studio pen because it is, and I do not mess with the opacity. Once I mess, I don't like messing with the opacity with my line work. It bothers me because also you can do line work and you can adjust the opacity of that layer later. So if you need it to be fainter, I like to be able to adjust it, but I'd like to be able to have the opacity at a hundred percent for my line work. It also, now you can see that nice smooth line that I work with all the time for my outlines. So the next thing that I do is I used to outline my all of my artwork in black. I don't do that anymore. I think that a little it's it, it adds a little more of a dynamic feel to it. If you outline your artwork in a color that is related to what you're working on. So I'm going to be working with a seal that's going to be black and yellow. So obviously if I'm going if I'm not going to do black because the black lines would then blend in with the black and a yellow line would just look weird. So either I'm going to go with like a, a dark gray or like a dark burnt orange kind of thing like that or like a brown that would go well with the yellow. So I think that if I did this, it kind of looks like a baby vomit. So I want to just maybe go with... Um, <laughs> I'm going to go with a gray because I think that a lighter gray would look really nice with the black. Also, you can change this later. If you make sure that you keep your line work layer at one layer, you can also always change that color later. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just have it kind of like a, a dark, dark gray. So it's not black, but it is close to it. So I'm going to just start lining. So I don't really have a specific of where I start with what I'm lining. So I just start lining and I feel like kind of explaining it is a little overkill, but a big thing that I'm looking at when I am lining is tangential lines, I believe is what it's called. Um, and I will, I will most definitely probably come across that later in the video at some point because it happens in almost every art piece. So I'm going to, as you can see at the base of each antenna, one antenna crosses over the forehead line. The other one is right on top of it right there. That shows that like the head is turned a little bit. So it, to me, it gives me a little bit more of a perspective and so that's why I'm doing that. So we're going to come down and we're going to draw his little ears that are these adorable little like sad, <laughs> sad looking ears. And I like to draw the eyes last. I don't, I, I don't really have an answer to that as to why. And then coming in with the fuzzies like that. And I give that little nose and a nose and it come down. Um, and then it's little jaw, it's little like lower jaw is kind of pouty. So <laughs> and it has like a square bottom jaw like that. Oh, come on. Maybe I'll just give it a little fluff. Okay. And now we're going to bring in those like creepy little man or mandibles that we decided 
to give on this creature because mashables aren't really mashables unless they kind of give children nightmares. So ha ha ha. Sorry, children. So then we're going to give with the eyes for my baby beans that are just starting with procreate. If you can see what I'm doing is you can draw a circle or a, a half circle. And if you hold it, like don't lift your pen off of the screen. Procreate will now then make it where it is a smooth ellipse and you can adjust it. You can, as long as your pen does not leave the screen, like contact with the screen, you can adjust it. You can also go up to edit shape and you can tell it to go to circle. You can edit all of these points and I'll just get rid of that right now. So it's very good. So if I'm like trying to draw this eyeball, I just hold it and it gives me that and then I can edit shape and I can get myself a little bit closer to that circle as opposed to trying to hand draw a circle because who has time for that? So if you see what I'm doing right here is I am dragging from the very top of that color and dragging it over and dropping it into the shape that I made. So right there, because it is not connected right there, if I try to fill that circle, it's going to fill everything. So I'm looking at this and this is great and all, but I feel like his eye would be cut off a little bit more from his nose. And so I wanna give it a little bit more of that depth where his eye is hiding behind his little schnoz. So I'm going to do that, okay. So I'm probably going to go back and fix that nose it a little bit. But what a, a rule that I've been um, discovering for myself is if I'm trying too hard to force a certain element, I walk away from it for a second. It will be there. It will not go away. It's okay. You can give it some time to think about and you can discover later what makes this what makes that element better for you. So like right now, I kind of like the nose, but I kind of don't. But if I keep poking at it, I'm going to just start whittling away at it and then I'm going to get really frustrated. So I'm going to walk away and I'm going to make, I'm going to work on other parts of the Mashable. So right now I'm going into oh, his little chest and I, and I flip this, I flip the canvas around all the time. And this was something that I really appreciated that I didn't have when I was doing more traditional art was I didn't have, I, I, I wasn't, tr I wasn't flipping the, the paper around as much as I probably should have. And just giving myself that perspective is so nice. I really went right here with making sure that it was flat to the ground. Another thing that you can do with Procreate, just like the circle, is if you draw a line and you hold it and keep your pen on the screen, it will then create a very straight line for you and you can just adjust it from there. Again, really helps if you're trying to get a really clean, flat line, just like I was with that. So this is, I didn't really give myself a guidance for in the sketch for the flippers, but I had an idea. And so I, I am drawing it in now. If you want to give yourself that and draw it in your sketch earlier, you can do that as well. But I kind of knew where I was going with that. I didn't try too hard in the sketch to just flesh that out because I knew what I wanted it to look like. And then this is a little hard because I want to be able to get like this really fluffy look. Um, and so just like rounding out the edges of these floofs. Okay. All right, getting that little fluffy belly in there. The tail is a lot closer. Okay, so I'm looking at here and I see this line where the, the seals flippers are these guys are even and then these guys are barely it's not that far so I want to make sure that I'm giving myself that space for these flippers as well so I am going to do that 
you can select both layers and bring things a little lower. Oh my God, Procreate, you're killing me. Okay, um, we'll do that. Bring this little guy, his tail down a little further and maybe have them overlap. The flippers needed to be farther down, um, so they were touching the ground a little bit better, um, a little closer together. So anyway, so that's something that uh, <laughs> just just dealing with and trying to figure out how it would make sense. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. Okay, so now we've got some fluff. I want the fluff to kind of floof, <laughs> to, to tuft out past his flippers a little bit. And then we've got this little fluffy body and then another flipper, maybe in a less detailed one, just a little floppy guy. Get some of those fluffs there, round out this booty because we need a little a nice round booty. And then bring and then get this guy. So with the tangent line, you can see right here that it's kind of confusing. It looks good, and I was thinking that, but it looks good, but it, it it's a little confusing where it's all one line for me, for my visual. So what I would want to do is I want to give myself a little separation for those flippers to show that this flipper is indeed in front of the other one. So I want it to be able to overlap just slightly, but I want it to have itself in the background. So if I go here and they aren't connected, see again, not a professional. So we're learning together and it's great. <laughs> So we're still working with this with this line and to make this flipper, this middle flipper look like it is in front of this flipper, I'm gonna just give it a little bit of character and bring it up slightly. So it's just gonna have this little flip up and I'm starting to get a little too sketchy with my line work line and it's starting to, and not cleaning it up. So we've got our flipper here and then we're just going to bring it up like that. So now it's very obvious, like, okay, this, this flipper is absolutely, without a doubt, in front of the back flipper. And so we understand what's going on. Also, these flippers kind of look like bread um, or like little shoes. And I'm here for it. I'm going to just start adding a little detail work. So... We're going to go here and I'm just kind of adding these little floofs, these little tufts to just show that there is some texture in the rest of the mashable on his body. And I'm also going to come back because I said I would and I'm going to come back and I'm going to clean up this nose a little bit more and just round it out and give him the cutest little schnoz ever. And then... And I'm going to just give it this very rounded looking fluff on the top. It's like these little tufts that it's coming out of. Okay, awesome. We did it. So now, now is the sad part is when you come in and you get your line work <laughs> and you look at it without, 
without the uh without the, the 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 fun messy sketch and you start really looking at uh what you have created and i already am seeing that the eyeballs are just very disproportionate and so i'm going to bring his eye it's like this eye is huge this eye needs to it's like either i i need to commit to either one eye being gigantic like both eyes being gigantic Okay, <laughs> so we're gonna do that. We're gonna, his eye is so protruding that he's actually covering his, his ear on the other side, which is fine. And we've got the little ear, we've got this. <laughs> And uh, voila, there we are. We're done. D d wrap it up. We're done. We're good. Don't need to do anything else. <laughs> Welcome back. Meg's camera doesn't film more than <laughs> 20 minute increments. So we give ourselves little breaks in between. So here we go. So now I'm just rounding out this eyeball and <laughs> really just thinking to myself, is this how we are going to be? Uh, committing to that because right now how I have the nose is I think that's more of a seal nose I feel right or is it that is more of a seal nose yeah that's more of a seal nose so we're going to just what we can do is we're slowly turning his head there we go all right, so now we've discovered that this guy's eyeball is going to be completely on the other side of his head, and we're going to give ourselves a little bit of a definition of this nose so we know where it's going. <laughs> and we can also, like, shading is going to really help us with this depth and where this, like, shape of this nose is. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's so ugly. Oh, uh, uh, it's wonderful. <laughs> this is what I live for. Anyway. Okay, so we've got... We've got our base and this is when we start cleaning up our line work and it's a little hard for you to see what I'm doing because you're not seeing my hands but I am cleaning up my line work and just giving myself some different like thicknesses. A big thing that I learned with art, especially with cartoon-esque art, is that thicker lines, thick, chunky lines tend to be cuter. Thinner lines tend to be more realistic and more uh, detail oriented. And so if you have, and that's not the case all the time. I mean, everyone, everyone has their own different versions and everyone has their own styles and it works for everybody and don't come after me. But for me, what I've discovered is the, th the thicker the line, the, the more cartoony it comes across. And so I want to be able to have kind of like these nice, bold, thick outlines for parts of the mashable like his like the flipper and the eyes and that kind of stuff so and if god help whoever's been following along with this <laughs> all right so okay now we've cleaned up lines so let's go and make our first color layer. So this is a style and this is a form that I like to do. You don't have to do it this way. You can have your own version. I like to do this. So I like to start one layer off and be very specific and make sure that I get in the lines for this one layer. All the other layers I get lazy because, and you'll see. So right now I'm going to choose the base layer. And you start thinking like, are zebras black with white stripes or white with black stripes? It's kind of the same thing here. What is my base color going to be and what I'm going to add on to it? I would like to make this guy a gray. A lot of my B Mashables, I would like, I instead of using actual black, I use a, light, a charcoal gray. You still get the point across without having to have your lines and your color mesh with one another and get confusing. 
a lot of things I don't have true black anymore. So I'm just going to fast forward. I'm not going to talk. And we have now filled out our base layer. So when I say base layer for color, I have now just made essentially a cutout. That is perfectly, or as perfectly as we can, um, perfectly, it, it's with the lines. It's, it's, it, you have the perfect shape of your, of your creature. So if I were to get rid of this, or just kidding, if I were to get rid of this, I have the perfect silhouette of my creature. Now I make a new layer above it and I clip this layer. So now I can choose whatever color I'm going to do. And since it's clipped to the layer below, the gray layer, all I have to do is I am just like, I am very willy nilly, you can see, it will only color inside the, the clipped layer. So that means that anything I clip to it moving on is going to be in the lines. And that's why I do that. So I hope that was helpful for you. So now, now we start drawing and we can bring up the bumblebee reference again because we want to get a little bit more of the understanding of the color. Um, we can pull the color if we really want to. That is a very vibrant yellow, so I'm going to bring it more to a softer. And we're going to just start coloring our little bean. <laughs> this is... Such a ridiculous looking creature! <laughs> okay, so I'm again, I'm being very messy because I'm going to be coming in later with the top, with the head and stuff like that. But I'm just doing a base layer of what I want the yellow stripes to be. So it tends to be big bands like this. And I don't want the flipper to be colored, and I will color over those later. And with the, when I'm making, when I've made the the yellow bands, I like to kind of give it a little bit of like, um, a little bit of fluff overlapping into the black. So just kind of give it those like little tufts right there. And then its little butt is yellow. Its little butt is actually like almost a little bit more of like an orangey yellow. So we can just, just play with that a little bit. And honestly, let's go with the fact that it's little back flippers will totally be yellow as well. I think that's a cute additive to that. And I'll erase that so it looks like the black is overlapping. All right, we are starting to see our little bumblebee. -le. I love it. Okay. So now I'm going to do another layer, again, clipping it, and I am going to come in and give it a little bit of a darker, no, I will not do a darker face because it is, okay, I'm going to go a little lighter because I want the eyes to pop. Also, You'll notice sometimes too that you've gone in and you missed a spot on one of the layers and that's okay and you just go and you work with it. So this is when I just start, and this is a layer above the yellow. And you want to be able to do different layers for a couple of reasons. One, for organization, it just makes it easier. 
Two, it helps you manipulate just the one color. So you can leave the other, the other color alone if you mess something up. So drawing, coloring the little mandibles. I hope I'm using that word right. <laughs> I'm like, look, I know what I'm doing. Oh, gosh darn it. There we go. Oh, look at this little bumble, bumblebee. So we're coloring this in so it pops outside on the off of that. We're going to go back in with the yellow because I'm noticing some things that I need to clean up a little bit just to give it that little extra definition. Okay. Um, with his face, I'm going to, on the same layer, color his wings. I don't know why. I'm just choosing that too. And I'm doing kind of like a tannish pale color. Okay. So without going super crazy with this first video, even though I feel like I've gone pretty crazy, um, this is going to be where I start doing a little bit more detail work. So um, I want to see a little bit of a variation of color on his, on his head. So I want to give him a little bit of like a brown coming in. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do like a circle here and just like add splotches of this color, maybe on his, on his little flippers too. And I'm going to come in with adjustments and do the Gaussian blur and bring it over and just kind of give it that like kind of a brownish glow. And then I'm going to smudge this smudge tool with a soft blend and I'm going to smudge this color over. This is the style and this is kind of what I do when I'm making the mashables. It gives it that like... Th this, is, this is when we start seeing like my style come in. It gives it a little bit of a light source and it gives it a little bit more of a color and so I'm going to also do another layer and I'm going to come in and I want to again come in with a little bit of brown just a little bit just to come in and do another Gaussian blur and just again it's just kind of giving it that like just a little bit of depth a little bit of color like there's dirt on this fur or something like that just so it's not three colors and that's it so next thing. So now I might, I, I might, if anything, I might come back later and give it a little bit. If I were to be like, if this were to be a commission or something like that, I might come in and give it a little bit more TLC with detailing and stuff like that. But as of right now, just for simplicity's sake, and I say simplicity, but it's been doing, we've been, we've been recording this for an hour, um, is to, I'm going to go into my shading. So I'm still new at a lot of things. One being light and shadows. I'm working on it. I'm working on it, I promise. But I'm still working on it. And so what I want to do is I want to know where my light is hitting on this creature and where it's coming from. So I think that this light would be, I want it to be coming from this direction. So I'm going to come in with a layer that's going over all of these guys. I put the arrows there to just kind of remind myself where the, the light is coming from. This is where you click that N and right above it, there's darker color. Yeah, so darker color. And that's when I choose like a blue. So shadows aren't black. They can look like it, but they have a color to them. A blue shadow is something that I work with a lot. And so I choose like a darker blue. If I were to just do darker color and put it over, I'm literally just coloring dark blue over what I'm drawing. If I change the opacity down to like 20%, then I kind of have a little bit more of a shadow. So you can see here, like since the, the light is coming from that direction, I'm going to put a shadow because his eyes bulging out, I'm giving him a shadow right there. And this all like this is when it starts really kind of giving this this really cool depth that you weren't getting up until this point. So 
you just start like the wing would create a shadow right here. The butt is going to have a little shadow, right? And so it creates this. And so the shadows also like, this is when you can start playing with that texture where it's shadowing some fuzz that you might not see. So maybe the shadow isn't going to be like perfectly round. It's going to have a little bit of, of a jagged nature to it. You do shadows underneath each one of these little tufts. And next thing you know, it looks like they're popping up a little bit more. So you just start shadowing where you think light would not be touching and where you'd be causing that. And so I think that there's going to be a shadow right at its feet, right? Right at the base of it. And so we just start shadowing. If I say shadow one more time, please just shock me. Um, so you're, you're adding darkness. You're adding depth with that. And so there is the shadow. Haha, I said it again. Poops. Just adding shadows in all the different areas. Maybe this is where that shadow can come in for its face to kind of give it a little bit more of like a where with the shape face that it has. So it's like its nose is coning a little bit. This is where I kind of come in with the blend. And so you have a you have the ability to add shadow, but blend it away. So it's not you can have your hard shadows and your soft shadows. And then sometimes I'll go in and literally just use the shadow as a little bit more texturing because I really like this this stage of the of the mashable creation okay so now that we've done that now that we know where the the light isn't this is where we do another layer and I go to lighter color you can also do hard light I like lighter color and I bring it down again to like a, a probably like 40 percent and then the light color that I'm going to do is one of two things. One, you just do, like for me, this is what I do. Again, not a professional, so this is just what I do. I use either a light blue, or if it's like a sunlight kind of thing, I come in and I do a yellow. Since I have yellow already, it's gonna be really hard to see, even if you do like a, like the opacity at the highest. Um, it's gonna be really hard to see on the yellow, but really easy to see on the, on the black. So, Again, we're going to go with it. Um, so I'm going to go with yellow because I think that that's where the, the sun is coming in. Since I'm having a hard time seeing it, I can drop my background color to be able to give myself a little bit of a understanding where I'm drawing this light. So here's a light right there on top of his, in his antenna. There's light here. You can't really see it, but it's there. I like to outline... Like there's the top of his head, there's his nose, got to remember to do some whiskers in a second. And just outlining the whole edge of one side where the light is coming. And this still works with, um, like, if you're not drawing along with a with a, an iPad and or anything digital, and you're working on um, more of a traditional medium, it still works. Sometimes you might just have to do it at different orders, but this this concept stuff like still works. Another thing that I learned is there are reflective like con I, I can't think of the word um but like we contact reflections I think is what it's something along those lines where you are in fact going to have a shadow where it's hitting the ground but right where a, a, something hits or is touching a surface there's this little like halo or uh, of of light that for wherever the light source is it's bouncing off and then spilling light onto your onto your onto your creature. So right here, even though I have the shadow, I have a little bit of a of a highlight that I'm gonna have over here for that contact on that ground. I can soften it up if I think it's a little too rough. 
but I think it also does a really good job of just making certain elements of the creature pop. And then again, I go through and add a little bit of texture with this, with this highlight. And then I like to add, I just, my style has like so those, those three big dots. And I just kind of add that in different places. It's almost like a, like a, a light reflection kind of thing. I like to put it on there, the wings and that kind of stuff. So now we've got, we've got the creature. We've got, we've got a pretty good <laughs> bumblebee. And so this is when you start thinking, okay, where, where is this guy? My thoughts are it's in sand. So I'm going to just go and give it a sandy base. Right. And the sandy base would be a little bit of a little, a little, little wobbly, a little wavy at the top because sand isn't completely flat. And then, you know, come in and I can clip to that layer and give it a little bit of a shadow just with a darker color of the sand. And I'm, I'm learning as I go of like what to explain to you and what, what doesn't need to be explained. And I, I mean, please be kind in the comments, but I, I would love to hear your feedback of like, this was awesome. Or I really liked when you started chatting about this. Can you chat more about it? Can you, can you give us a little bit more of the why behind it or anything like that? I would absolutely love to hear your your ideas on that and, and, and your thoughts about this. Again, please be kind. I am trying my best and it might not be exactly what you're looking for right away, but I, I'm, I'm building this and I'm going to make this into something wonderful and I would love for you to help me make it such. So I'm going to have this clip to that. There we go. All right. And then a fun thing that I like to do is I take, this is a fun like cloud cheat that we can do is we've got clouds. You just make this like really rough shape, right? Really, really rough shape of just white. And then you take your background color and you go just a little darker at the bottom because lo and behold, I don't know if you guys knew this, clouds have shadows right underneath them. You can also, if you wanted to add just a little bit there, then you go into my favorite thing, Gaussian Blur, and you just blur it up a little bit and they're out in the background and then you can just blend them together a little bit and look at that, you have some really cool clouds in the background. So look at that. <laughs> we have made our very first Bumblebee, our very first Mashable of the YouTube verse. The very last thing that I like to do is add the eyeballs and I'm really afraid that my camera is going to cut off right when I do this and it's going to be hilarious. So we're going to do this very quickly, but we're going to just do one, two, three. And then I have decided that the, the, the farther eyeball only gets two dots. So we've got one, two, three, and then we've got I'm doing one extra layer and some really thin and a little bit of opacity for some whiskers. <laughs> and, and look at that. We made a bumblebee, everybody. I, uh, this was hilarious and fun. And oh my goodness, I can't believe that we did this. So now I'm going to sign it because why not sign your artwork? Make it sure it's not. Uh, nah, nah. Okay. Okay. So that in, in a very rough first ever way to explain Mashables. That is that is my thought process as to why I am doing what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. So my th next thing is, is what would a, bu a bumblebee do? Where, what, what would it eat? What would it look like when it's old? What would it look like when it's, when it's a baby and it's new? Bees are hatched in hives. So uh, do bumblebees just have a bunch of hives on their beaches or are they, are they live born just like a mammal for a seal is? All of these thoughts, I would love to see what you guys think. We can make a separate video of just nerding out about this exact animal. But that's the process of making a Mashable. 
I will get better at explaining or or figuring out better ways to consolidate my brain to explain to you with this. But this was a very fun first challenge for me to be able to share with you inside my brain without having outside distractions or being confined to a one to three minute TikTok video. So I had a blast. I hope you did too. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. I'm still a baby at this. And so I would love to see how this grows. And thank you so much for following along with this. If you want to be able to share what you made when you were drawing along with me, or your version of the the Bumble Bumblebeel, go ahead and tag me on Instagram at Meg's Mashables. I would love to see what you do. You can also tag me on Twitter. If you want to message me, you can also email it to me. If you don't have any of those things, it's Meg's Mashables at gmail.com. I would love to see your versions of the Bumblebeel. So maybe another video we can chat about what the Bumblebeel would, what its characteristics would be, what it would sound like, where it would live, it's migration patterns, that kind of stuff that Mashables is just, there's so much to it. And it's so exciting. And it's such a fun world. And I'm so excited to share this with you guys. So um, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for coming. And until next time, this was Meg with Meg's Mashables. Um, be kind to yourselves. Okay, guys, because you're worth it. Bye. Adios. Oh, geez. Did we do it? I don't know. And that's Meg shining off.